Hi boys, girls and families. It's so good to be spending the evening with you. I hope you've been well since our last session. Yesterday we had our cozy story time and we read a wonderful book about kindness. If you didn't get to see it, I suggest that you go onto our YouTube page, um, the Grace United Methodist Church in Gaithersburg YouTube page, or on um, what you're watching right now, the on the Engage Children's Ministry Facebook page, you'll be able to find all of the previous um, Engage moments and cozy times that we have done. So you see behind me, I have my helper right here. He decided he was going to take over the bed instead of me, so I got thrown onto the floor while he looks quite comfortable. Anyway. I was hoping that he would sing a song for me instead of me having to sing it, but it looks like you are going to have to endure me singing a very little song for you. But first of all, I want to know how you are, boys and girls. Can you tell me how you are? Are you doing good? What are some of the emotions that you have felt this week? There's some happy, some sad, some worried but mostly happy I think it's such a beautiful sunshine and it's just so lovely to be outside when it's not too hot so earlier in the morning and later on in the afternoons and just spending time with our families and we're getting to spend lots of time with our families right now because we're all together during COVID which we have talked about before and which I'm going to be talking about again coming up very soon but today let's talk about emotions so we have been doing this study managing our emotions and this was written by the United Methodist women and we've had a great time studying this and on Tuesday when I did this with you I actually replayed Thursdays because it's something that I wanted you to see uh, again and of course feel free to go back and look at it again um, I, I walked through some techniques that you can do to help yourself if you are feeling worried or anxious. We talked about deep breathing and we talked about breathing through a straw. So deep breath in and then through a straw. And we talked about tapping where we tap certain parts of our body and that can do certain things to our nerves, our nerve endings. Now it's too much to explain right here, right now. So I would suggest going back and look at that and practicing that because that is a good way to learn how to calm down in an anxious situation. Today, we are going to be talking about Nehemiah and we are in session four and this is titled, we're going to be doing part of it today and then another part next week. It's titled, Finding Power, Helping Others. Now we like that, right? That sounds like a very optimistic title, a very happy title. Finding Power and Helping Others. Now where do you think we could find power, boys and girls? Do you think we'll be like Superman and whisk around in a, in a telephone booth and suddenly have all this power? We find our power through God. So let's say a prayer together, handing this session over to God before we go ahead. Now, boys and girls, you pray however you want to pray with your hands together, head bowed, arms lifted up to the Lord, however you want to pray. Just make sure that you really are praying from your heart. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us the, the time and the chance and the help to be able to do this lesson together. We thank you for everything that you have given us. Please help us to understand this study, this lesson, so that we can go out and help others. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, let's get stuck in. So, there is a song called we are the church. Now, we used to have a pastor at Grace United Methodist Church called Miss Wendy Jones, Pastor Wendy Jones. And, uh, and then her name changed to Cordova. You may remember her, Pastor Cordova. 
um, part this is this song that I'm going to show you right now used to be her favorite song and when it used to come up in the church and we would sing it Pastor Wendy could not keep her feet still she would dance and I used to love this song because it just made me think of such joy that Pastor Wendy felt when this song came on now I have to say boys and girls there's a reason I'm not in a choir uh, God may like my voice but I'm not sure how many other people do it looks like my dog's leaving because he knows I'm about to sing. <laughs> okay, listen to this. It's listening to the words. Are you okay up there? Okay, it's called I Am The Church. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes we're the church together and I successfully scared the dog off I didn't think it was that bad did you boys and girls well there are some other verses that I'm going to read to you so you've got to hear how it's sung um, I have the other verses right here on my computer so we sang I am the church you are the church now the next verses are the church is not a building the church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, from all times and places. Now, isn't that lovely? I love the words to that song too. So we are going to explore Nehemiah, like I said. I'd like you to practice saying that, boys and girls. Can you try and say that? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. That's how we say it. Nehemiah. And you will be able to find Nehemiah in the Old Testament in the Bible. So Nehemiah's story, like I said, is found in the Old Testament in a book that is called Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah had a very important job. He was a cup bearer to the king. He filled and handed around the cups in which wine was served. When the king noticed that Nehemiah was sad, he asked what was wrong. Nehemiah explained that his hometown Jerusalem was destroyed. He asked the king to let him go back and rebuild the city. The king liked Nehemiah, so he gave him permission to return and even provided supplies for him. When Nehemiah went back to Jerusalem, he found other people there who wanted to help rebuild the walls and the gates of the city. Now I'm going to read from the Bible, Nehemiah, um, so you can see how good things happen when people get together to make things better for each other. So let's see. We are going, I pre-marked my page here, we are in, where are we? Nehemiah 2 verse 17 and 18. So I'm here in my Bible, Nehemiah 2, verse 17 and 18. So think, when I'm reading this aloud to you, think about the good things that can happen when people get together to make things better for each other. Okay. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burnt with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall, the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began his good work. Wow, thanks 
be to God. So Nehemiah experienced a lot of emotions and we've been talking about emotions. Now, first he was sad. Why do you think Nehemiah was sad? He was sad because his city was ruined. Then he was glad and happy and excited because the king was helping him. Later, however, he was frustrated and fearful because some people made fun of him and wanted to stop the work on the city. Maybe he was even a little worried. Now that's a lot of emotion right there. Boys and girls, if you could name all of those emotions, can you think what I just said? Shall we name them all? Sad, glad, happy, excited, frustrated, I've run out of fingers, and worried. Now that's just the, some of the emotions that Nehemiah was feeling because of his city being in destruction. Now, two guys in particular were really mean. Sanbalat, that's a name. Can we say that together? Sanbalat and Tobiah. Those are the two names of the two people. Now I'm going to read again through the Bible. Through the Bible, I'm sorry. I'm going to read to you in the Bible, again in the book of Nehemiah about um, ne about Tobiah and Sanballat. Now we are reading Nehemiah 4, 1 to 6. Okay, I already had it marked off here. So Nehemiah 4, 1 to 6. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and greatly incensed. That's a big word for being really angry. He ridiculed the, Jew, the Jews, like made fun of them. He ridiculed the Jews. I can't say that properly. Ridiculed the Jews, there we go. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burnt as they are? Tobiah, the Amorite, who was at his side, said, What are they building? Even a fox climbing up on it would break down the stones of their wall. Now that was a way of him making fun. Hear us, our God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of their builders. Now listen to this last one. Listen to this, boys and girls. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. Now we're going to come back to that verse in a minute. So let me put my Bible down here. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> So we talked about these people, Tobiah and Sanballat, who were really mean. Um, they made fun of Nehemiah, saying that their wall, the one that Nehemiah was building, that their wall was so poorly built that a fox would run on the wall and knock it down. So that was their way of like being really mean and saying if a fox came on your wall, the whole thing would come crumbling down. Do you think these people were jealous? That's an emotion. Maybe these people that were making fun were jealous. Jealous of the wall 
that Nehemiah was building because jealousy is an emotion. But Nehemiah loved God and he wanted to do God's will. So he and his supporters, they kept working to build the city of Jerusalem. Now, that verse that I read to you, I would like you to memorize it. You're actually going to memorize part of the verse. And I have an activity that I'm going to explain that you should do at home. And we are actually going to finish here, boys and girls, because I would like to get more into this next week. But your homework will be to learn the verse that I'm going to read for, for you. It's actually part of it, like I said. So let me read it right now. Now I'm going to read part of the verse, not the whole verse. These are the words that I want you to remember. So we rebuilt the wall for the people worked with all their heart. Did you hear that boys and girls? Let me say it one more time. So we rebuilt the wall for the people worked with all their heart. Now that is in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a book in the Bible. It's not one that you may read that often, but that is one that's very important to us this week to talk about emotions. Now Nehemiah, and that is chapter four, verse six. That is what I want you to learn, boys and girls. So Nehemiah chapter four, verse six. So we rebuilt the wall for the people worked with all their heart. Now, one way that I teach in Sunday school classes, if I was in a Sunday school class now, I would go around all the children and I would say, okay, Bob, say that in a funny accent. And I would have it written on the wall and they might say it like, say how Mickey Mouse says it and then I would say okay Sarah now you read it in a different voice and she might read it in a whisper and then I'd say okay Will you read it in a different way and he might read it loud so by the time everyone has gone around you're you're remembering the words the Bible verse right so my activity for you until we come back to this very book of Nehemiah next week is the words in this verse can you remember already I've said it a few times and I will say it again so we rebuilt the wall for the people worked with all their heart that is what I want you to remember I would like you to write that down on a piece of paper all of those words that I just said that Bible verse and I would like you to cut each word out and you know how it goes, for we rebuilt the wall. What I want you to do is scramble them all up, scramble all the words up so they're all mixed up. And then I want you to put them back together. And I want you to time how long it took you to put them back together and keep doing it and doing it until you get your best time. Hmm, I wonder who's going to get the best time. I want you to tell me. I want you to message me on Engage Children's Ministry Facebook page and I want you to tell me what your timing is to be able to put that verse back together after it's been cut out. Now, if you have any brothers and sisters or cousins or people that you are spending time with, even your parents, parents can have fun too. Um, I would say you cut some of those words out. Well, all of those words are Bible study words. And then the person that you're going to be playing with cuts out those words as well so that you have a set of the words of the Bible verse they have a set of words in the Bible verse and then you put the timer on and see who can get it done first mm. what do you think does that sound like fun I think I'm going to go and practice that right now so boys and girls let me leave you with this I love each and every one of you each and every one of you. You know how to get hold of me if you want to talk to me about absolutely anything. 
remember to say your prayers and thank God for all of the emotions that you have because God has given you every emotion that you feel and God always has a way through the bad emotions and always has a way to bring you back to happy. Okay, my lovely boys and girls, I will see you on Tuesday so we can go back to the study of Nehemiah and you can tell me your times on getting that Bible verse put together. Don't forget to um, listen to the service on Sunday at 10 o'clock and Sunday school following with Miss Alicia at half past 11. If you would like the Zoom information, contact me and I will get it right to you. Okay, boys and girls, I love each and every one of you. Good night. Cheers.